Hello, this is Don Peppers, and welcome back to Peppers Unplugged. I've been doing a lot of reading lately about the inherent randomness of our existence. The world, the universe around us, is by its nature unpredictable, and this extends to our economy, to the success and rise of, of companies and nations and societies. There are many, many random events. And lately, there's been some really good writing about this topic. I want to just talk to you about four different books that are, 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 are sort of related. One, of course, is uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb's The Black Swan. It's a classic. Now, Taleb, you know what? He's an obnoxious writer. The attitude that he has in the book is, I'm brilliant and you aren't. Uh, everybody else is dumb, uh, but I'm really, really smart. Uh, and, and it's a very hard uh, book to get through because of that attitude. On the other hand, the writing really is, um, the, that is, the concepts in the book are very, very good. The Black Swan is, uh, the subtitle is The Impact of the Highly um, Improbable. The Highly Improbable, what he means is that there are outlier events. There are inherently unpredictable events. Um, uh, earthquakes are not predictable. Stock market crashes are, are, are not predictable. And uh, uh, there are a lot of really good insights in this book. Uh, basically, um, uh, his, 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 uh, one of his major points is you, you need to protect yourself from having a constant illusion that you really know what's going on because you don't. What's happening a lot of times is simply random fluctuation in the existence that we're all in, and you have almost no control over it. And yet people rate control, they, they rate themselves much higher. The Black Swan is about how disasters can happen with unforeseen uh, regularity, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and they're totally non-predictable. Another book that's very useful is Ubiquity, Why Catastrophes Happen by Mark Buchanan. This book also is full of uh, interesting arguments about the randomness of our lives. Everything from earthquakes to forest fires to the stock market, stock market being inherently unpredictable. Uh, th basically, the argument is that uh, network events like Earthquakes, where the, the, the rocks that are under a particular seismic fault, they depend on the status and the criticality, critical state of other rocks uh, along the line. And when you slip one, sometimes it is, it is no big problem, but sometimes when you slip one, you have an avalanche of, of change, a cascading effect. And that cascading effect is, is, is a random in occurrence. You can't ever predict it in advance. Uh, and, and, and yet, he gives an example. He gives an example, he says, uh, uh, suppose uh, you're dropping grains of rice on a table, a flat table, and you drop these grains of rice at the same spot all the time. You've, over time, you build up a pile of rice, and the pile gets steeper and steeper, and every once in a while, you drop a grain of rice on the top, and there's a, kind of an avalanche. Sometimes it's a little tiny avalanche, mostly. Occasionally, it's a very large avalanche. It's impossible to predict where those avalanches are going to happen uh, or, or when, and, uh, and it has to do with the criticality of the tensions within the existing pile of rice. So the mathematics of that can now be modeled on computers, and we have systems, complex adaptive systems of agents that, that, that basically interact with each other, and that those feedback loops among the agents, whether it's an anthill or uh, stock market investors or paramutual horse race betters, uh, those complex systems have critical states as well, and that's why markets crash, which leads me to another book I read just recently, which is uh, Why Stock Markets Crash by Didier Sornet. Uh, he's a French-speaking professor of geophysics at an American university, and he's writing about critical states and complex systems like stock markets, like earthquakes. Uh, and uh, uh, that also, if you can get to the math, even if you can't get to the math, he's got it in separate places. That's also a very good book to read. Finally, another book that's worth, uh, worth the trip is a book called The Drunkard's Walk. 
How Randomness Rules Our Lives, and that's by Leonard Mladeno. Now, I, I don't have a picture of that book for you, but it because it, it's on my it's on my Kindle, and and so I don't have the uh, the physical book. But The Drunkard's Walk is also an excellent exposition of why uh, uh, randomness is so dominant in our lives, and yet how we have the illusion that it isn't, because we're always looking backward at events the way they happen, and we're seeking causes for those events. That's where our brain works. Our brain works by cause and effect. We see something happen, and we look for the cause, and that's how we remember. That's how we process what's going on in an environment. That's how we survive as, a, as an organism, by trying to uh, adapt to things, to see the causes of future events, to try to predict what's going to happen. And our only method for prediction is examining the past. But it also creates an inherent bias in our lives. We always seem to think that events should have a cause and we should be able to detect them. When the financial markets melt down, we look for the cause. What caused the financial markets to melt down? What causes the economy to go into a tank? Maybe nothing. Maybe it's a random set of events, a fluctuation in the economic life that, that, that we all inhabit. That's the message in some of these books. And just because on a post facto basis you can look for the, the reason, that's not it. In The Drunkard's Walk he gives a great example. Bill Miller is the fund manager for, for Leg Mason. Uh, great fun. He's had a very, very good track record. In fact, uh, something like 15 years uh, out of the last uh, uh, 18 or whatever, he has beat the S&P 500. And nobody's ever done, n very few people do this. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the journals looking at this said, hey, the odds that by pure chance a, 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 a fund manager could beat the S&P 500 15 years in a row is like 375,000 to 1. Over the last 40 years, um, uh, that's, that's what happened with Bill Miller. And he's the only one in, in the last 40 years who's done that. That was the argument. But uh, Mladeno says, the author of The Drunkard's Walk says, no, no, no. The odds are actually about three out of four. That if you look at a 40-year period and you have about 3,500 fund managers you're looking at, that one of them, one of them will, during some 15-year period, actually beat the S&P 500 uh, for 15 years in a row. So that's the way our mind plays tricks on us with uh, cause and effect. We're always looking backwards and we should be looking forward. One other thing. Uh, Lodno says, in order to test your hypothesis about your prediction, you need to sometimes do something that's uh, to, to test whether it's negative. And Dan Ariely, who gave a great talk at the HSM World Innovation Forum on, on, uh, uh, on his book, Predictably Irrational, suggested the same thing. He said, do you think, for instance, that you're really good at hiring people? And of course, everybody's hand goes up. We all think we, we know how to recognize a good person. And he said, well, there's only one way to prove whether you're good or to test that hypothesis. And that is, on some day when you're ready to hire somebody, Hire someone you don't think will work out. Hire someone who you, you really don't think is qualified for the job or you don't think will work out. Uh, and, uh, and see if they do. Because that's the only way you can test whether your evaluation of the right people is correct or not. Or is it an illusion? And he said, by the way, the Israeli Air Force hires pilots this way. Every once in a while, they bring a pilot in who doesn't meet the criteria. They bring that pilot in on purpose. They use, they, they train the pilot. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to train the pilot, and sometimes they wash out. But when they don't wash out, if a pilot that they wouldn't have hired doesn't wash out, then they learn something very important about their selection criteria. And, and, and that is a lesson in how to triumph over the randomness of life.